Well, here we are at the VW Nut Garage with my two red cars. Um, this one doesn't need too much of anything. It's got to be ready for a car show, all Volkswagen show this weekend. Um, this one, I need to peel the passenger side front and rear fenders off of it and get to cutting that floor out of there and what's left of that heater channel out of there. And... Um, so that's where we're at. I believe this is episode or part 13. Um, so still got to put the exhaust and the carburetor on the engine. We'll do that first. I'll get you guys set up and that's where we'll go right away. And All right. So start with the heater boxes. That's where I'm going to start. I didn't paint the heater boxes because they had a lovely coat of oil already on them. I may take them off later and paint them. I'm also constantly looking for more. Uh, heater boxes so it may be that we change these out before the engine goes back in Daisy um, I'm using these metal gaskets I'm only using the metal gaskets because I've had good luck with them I know a lot of other people use the uh, paper or there's another gasket material that's maybe better but I've always had good luck with these metal ones so that's what I'm going with that's what's on Ruby so that's where we're at so um, I got gaskets on all four sides. Here, beautiful looking heater box. We may not even have heat in this car when it's all said and done um, for a while. So, a couple of wavy washers. Keep everything logged out. A couple of fresh nuts. Not that one. Wrong side. Let's go with that one. I still need to put oil in here, so don't let me forget. Here's where we're at. Uh, these little gaskets, I got all that just fitted up there. And uh, right here, new donuts right there. Um, sometimes these can give you a little trouble getting those in there. So I'll set you guys up while I wrestle a couple of them. And we'll see if we can't uh, get the rest of that buttoned up there on the exhaust. So let me get you set up. And turn. Well, I don't know where I was when the camera shut off, but I can tell you where I am. And uh, I got this one in and this one is... That one's close. All right, let's see if we have a little bit better luck this time. I mean, that's pretty close.
Oh, careful. Like butter. My little compressor film, but it's not too bad. A couple of things I wanted to note as I was buttoning up this side. I try to put like these fasteners in a spot where when it comes time to take it apart again, like either for me or for the next guy or that it's easy to get to. A lot of times you see these and they're clocked about 90 more degrees straight up and down, but then it's in this configuration, it's difficult to get like a wrench in there or an air tool or even the battery powered impacts um so i always try to remember to kind of think about the next guy i think even if that next guy's you like it's going to be way easier for it to come apart with a little bit of forward thinking so i'm going to button up the other side then i'll bring you guys back for the carburetor so if you're working on your volkswagen you already know the difficulty that comes with um finding parts parts pieces gaskets everything so i thought i would just see what i could find what was out there so i ordered this gasket kit from my local uh i don't want to shout them out but it, you, there's one in every town just a regular auto parts store um also this carb kit which is what brought me here because i came to get the base gasket for the carb um and you know what it it's not horrible i mean it's rubber and it's cork and it's metal and uh, but all the, for a gasket kit, it, it seems to be all there and, and complete. Uh, same with the carb kit. It does, um, I believe, almost every Solex carb there is out there is kind of a universal, universal kit they sell. Uh, the only thing that's different from what you used to get or what people I've talked to seem to remember is the accelerator pump is made out of a, uh, in these particular kits, is made out of a different material. So I'll let you know how it holds up in that carb. I think I have this same kit uh, in the carburetor in Ruby, and it seems to be working just fine. Uh, so we'll get to putting the carb on. I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so I took this here carburetor over to my friend Musty One's house, uh, and he generously let me soak it in his agitating, ionizing soup. Um, and it came out super clean, and I just rebuilt it right over there. Um, there's like three. I went through this exact same carb on Ruby like three times. So I didn't. Dec I decided not to bore you guys with rebuilding another one of these. It's the exact same thing I did to Ruby's. The exact kit I put in it the exact same way. Uh, base gasket, and we'll get her on the car. The engine, not the car. All right, so the carb's up there. So sorry, you guys almost hit the deck. Uh, wavy washer and nut, so I'll probably drop this. So turn on the camera because, well. It's really, it's not this difficult. It's a hundred percent, it's me.
Like I said, it was me. All right, you guys get the idea, so we'll tighten the carb on, put the air cleaner on to protect everything, uh, get it off the engine stand. We still have to pull the flywheel off, so that will require a trip to get a 36mm uh, socket, so we will do that. And uh, so let's go ahead and... All right, so the carb's on there. It's loose. I just need to tighten it down. Um, Nothing out of the ordinary when I went to set the carb on there, it was fine. Get the air cleaner on there to protect it. Put some oil in it, make sure it doesn't leak. Uh, get it sitting on the table, so we got to clean the table and under the table. So that we can pull the flywheel off of it. And put the rear main in it. So in 1964, it was a 6 volt electrical system in Daisy. Uh, most of you probably already know that, but this is the voltage regulator uh, for 12 volt. The whole car has been converted to 12 volt, probably still running the 6 volt harness. Um, should be fine. But this is the voltage regulator. Typically, it's underneath the back seat of the bug, usually on the driver's side um, is where you're finding it. But for this one, it's on the... This is pretty typical installation on a 12 volt conversion. Um, you could put it anywhere and just run some wires. I, I'm fine with it right there, so that's why I left it. I move on to the coil now. My friend Musty One came over and he brought me this here 36 millimeter um, socket. And uh, my little compressor wouldn't power it, so then I had to go back over to him and borrow this big electric guy right here and so get in there to get at that rear main seal he also helped me uh, take the engine off of the stand and put it on the uh, table here for sure. Getting nervous for a second. Alright, special thanks to Musty One for the electric impact and 36 millimeter uh, Super Bowl remover. I, this is the old rear main seal. It's not horrible, but it's not great. But I used the um, I used the old seal to kind of help put the um, new seal in.
I'm going to go with that. So we get the flywheel on, get it hammered down, and uh, move on to the clutch and the pressure plate. It's good and tight. All right, so you guys are looking down on top of uh, the one and two cylinder side. The oil fill side. It's time to put some oil in this here engine. I uh, usually keep a rag handy, so I use the rag to help keep the funnel kind of more at a, you know, Well, I don't see none leaking out underneath yet. Alright, you guys get the idea. Right after that, I'm going to go. Alright, so we filled the oil up to the appropriate level. Um, it's kind of hard to see. But you get the idea. I promise it's full. And I rolled the motor over a couple of times, but now I'm going to get into the valve adjustment right here, right here on number one. Uh, the rotor is pointing at the number one cylinder as indicated by the dash mark in the generator, or I mean in the distributor. I can't show that trick enough times. So there we are, we're in. Uh, let's go ahead and... That one's okay. That one, not okay. <clears throat> I believe the valve tolerance for the 1500 is 004. I could be wrong. Um, I know that I've always ran them a little bit loose, so I can't really, I can't really say which one this is because you can't read it no more. I just know it's the one that's bent funny. That's the one for uh, for valves. I think it's probably. Uh, Probably five. Six seems a little bit loose to me, but might be six. that's good on that one you guys get the idea um, I'll finish this uh, this these two and then rotate it around and do these two spin the whole engine around bring you guys back and show you the nifty trick again and 
do the number three and number four cylinder. I turned you guys on just in case I dropped this engine off of this table or the table breaks or something. You guys will get it. Well, careful. That right there should be about number three, which is right here. Careful. All right, you guys get the idea. So I don't know what this is uh, supposed to be for, but I've heard of people using fuel line to put your spark plugs in, uh, especially when it's in the car and it's the number three cylinder. But this is just what I had handy, whatever wiring grommet this is. And I just mash it onto the spark plug and then I'm able to slide it in and turn. Um, just a little tip from the VW nut. Well, the motor is, uh, for all intents and purposes, all finished. Belt's on, ignition system's on, fuel system's on. Valves are adjusted, oil's in it. Um, so, essentially, it should run at least as good as it did when I took it out. Hopefully better, but at least as good as okay. Um, let me get you guys set up. And I'll show you what we're moving on to next. All right, so what you're looking at is the floor of Daisy and Patina. Patina, you got to go because you got no eye protection. Um, and uh, what we got here is a DeWalt grinder with a cutoff wheel. Once I can get the dog to calm down, uh, it's going to get a little bit loud. And I'm just going to start taking out this floor um, and this... Uh, heater channel here and uh start go just start dissecting if it's rusty it's got to go so that's where we're headed next so here we go <laughs>
Alright, so I won't subject you guys to any more of that annoyingness, but that's going to give me probably enough for this video, uh, which I believe is part 13. So, uh, thank you guys for coming to the BW Nug Garage and on Daisy's journey, and uh, we'll see you soon.